Last several years, discerning credible news from misinformation has become more and more difficult for many. ABC 10 News parent company, the EW Scripps Company, knows the importance an informed public and free press play in our democracy. And that's why this week we're teaming up with the News Literacy Project to help raise awareness and help you make sense of the muddled landscape we are increasingly finding ourselves in. Joining us to talk about National News Literacy Week and some important things to keep in mind when you're consuming news is Peter Adams with the News Literacy Project. Welcome, Peter. It's great to be with you. So are there any simple ways to spot misinformation? No, uh, unfortunately not. Um, purveyors of misinformation often change their tactics and, and try different, uh, different approaches, and misinformation kind of clusters around current events, so it moves around thematically, but there are some commonalities that we can learn to spot. Um, but the best tip that we can offer um, first off is for folks to just kind of pause and slow down uh, and to be careful, especially when you're reacting quickly to information that you're encountering uh, online. Yeah, that's a good point because there is so much information coming at us so quickly. Are you concerned at all that the line is being blurred between news organizations like ours and others who disseminate information? There is a blurring of the lines and a lot of that is is intentional. Um, a lot of what we've seen over the last five and 10 years are, are more bad actors online kind of trying to pass their work off or their uh, their information off as standards based news when in fact it's not. So even seeming like a news organization. So again, a, a pausing over something that you're not sure about asking yourself if you're sure about the source of information and even taking you know an extra 20 seconds to to search that source and make sure it's a standards based legit news source is a great first step and can go a long way to weeding out a lot of nonsense that comes across your feed and what have you found in terms of the confusion out there is it even in terms of the demographics and the generations it depends i think you know i think um younger folks who've grown up with online technologies and have grown up on social media are a little savvier at spotting some of the hoaxes and scams financial scams and things like that that uh, uh, that are out there um, but they can fall very quickly for health misinformation um, and you know are, are vulnerable in the same ways that that um, grown folks are uh, in terms of their cognitive uh, biases Right, so we all have a, a sort of bias toward our own experiences. We have a strong bias toward things we already believe, um, including our our values and and um, you know ethical beliefs. Right, and so when bad actors try to capitalize on that, it's an attempt to get us to react quickly and accept misinformation more readily because it agrees with us. So there's an exploitative factor that we're all vulnerable to, and I would say that's that's uh, across generations. Mm. I know that the News Literacy Project has some tools online that people can use to help kind of beef up their skills. Can you explain those really quickly? Of course. We have uh, something called the Checkology Virtual Classroom, which is free for educators to use with their students, and they can create student accounts um, with a robust collection of lessons and challenges. And we've made a, a selection of those lessons available to the general public. So if you go to checkology.org, whether you're an educator, uh, you're a parent, or you're there for yourself and, and just to check it out yourself, you can register for an account um, and access that. Um, we have a great uh, app called Informable um, that is in the, the Android and, and Apple uh, uh, app stores that help you sort of um, develop news literate dispositions. So habits that you really need differentiating between fact-based statements and opinion-based statements or news uh, reports and opinion or evaluating the strength of evidence, some of those dispositions that can help you sort of guard yourself uh, in the moment. And then we've got some great weekly email newsletters as well that folks can sign up for at our website at uh, newslit.org. A lot of great tools. Peter Adams, Senior Vice President of Education with the News Literacy Project. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and insights. Well, thank you. It was great being with you.